my name is Theo Bennett and I'm one of the tutors for MCAT Self Prep. And today we're going to be talking about timing for the MCAT. What I really hope to accomplish today is to give you a bunch of strategies that can help you whether you have too much time or too little time on the MCAT, really everything in between. I think one point that I really want to make at the beginning is a lot of the timing issues that people have for the MCAT really don't actually derive from having too little time. And what I mean by that is the mistakes that you make because of having too little time don't arise from not having enough time to walk through adequately through your thought process, but instead they come from kind of this underlying anxiety that comes from not having enough time. You feel rushed, and so that feeling causes you to panic, and then down the line, that panic sort of causes you to make dumb mistakes. And so I just, as we're going through this, I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind that sure, we can fix the timing issues, but, but we also wanna practice calming yourself down and then maintaining focus under pressure. So for example, and I know this is a little bit extreme, but I would personally, when I was taking my practice tests, I would rush to wherever I was taking those practice tests. Usually it was the library at my school. And then on purpose, I would just allow myself to show up like five minutes late, for example. Um, and so that kind of just made me start my practice tests on the wrong foot. Uh, it, in order to sort of simulate that anxiety. And so with time, like just causing myself, again, intentionally to be stressed out at the beginning of my practice exams, I had so much practice being in this space where I felt disorganized and rushed that I was able to kind of not overcome that anxiety, but I just stopped being afraid of it because I was so used to it. So I, it really gave me the practice of calming myself down when uh, I was in a high pressure situation. But anyway, the, enough of my uh, sort of elaborate practice test conditions, uh, let's let's dive into to timing issues. So the best way to solve timing issues for the MCAT is to practice, right? Practice makes perfect. So we wanna practice timing for the MCAT. And basically how that boils down is you wanna do three cars passages in 30 minutes or 20 science questions in 30 minutes. That's basically MCAT test taking pace. So I would try to divide up your practice problem time into 30 minute chunks where you're doing the respective amount of problems in order to really get practice with uh, those test taking conditions. Another thing that's super important is you wanna practice doing those practice problems without revealing the answers. So turn off tutor mode. And I know that's hard, right? Because you don't have that immediate feedback. But I personally think this is important because again, it induces those feelings of anxiety. You have practice not getting that immediate feedback. So that way you're able to still continue your efforts without knowing whether you got uh, the previous question right or wrong. Another really overlooked piece of timing issues is content, right? If you have more than a couple weeks, something that can really help you speed up naturally is to just become more familiar with the content. And so that way you're able to work through problems and kind of have your logical and reasoning skills um, flow more naturally when you have all the appropriate pieces to make an adequate uh, judgment for a given question. In addition to that, so something that I recommend for all of my tutoring students is I'll have them practice um, as they get closer to the exam in longer test taking conditions than they'll face on that on test day, right? So if your section is going to be, let's say you have to do nine cars passages in 90 minutes, right? I'll instead ask those students to do 12 cars passages in 120 minutes. So that that way, as they get to test day, it feels easier, right? The, the, the timing and the overall uh, difficulty that you're asked to perform in is lower. I guess a good comparison is it's kind of like training with heavier weights, right? So you're, you're purposefully training harder so that that way test day seems easier. Okay, so Main problem, the problem that we're all talking about is having too little time for the MCAT, right? That's what, that's what we're here for. So my first piece of advice for if you have too little time is to start fast, right? So start right out of the gate from the beginning um, going faster than you normally would. And the reason for this is you're in control if you're setting the pace, right? If you need to rush during some part of that section in order to finish on time, Oftentimes what people will do is they'll just go at their normal pace and then for the last 30 minutes or so, they'll have to really sp speed things up in order to make sure that they answer all the questions. But what we wanna do is flip that on its head, right? We wanna take those 30 minutes that you have to rush and put those at the beginning because in that way, you're setting the pace, right? If we can take those 30 minutes that you'll naturally need to rush and move them to the beginning of the, of the section, then that way, if you do it at the beginning, you're in control. Right? And so you have control of the situation 
and hopefully that will kind of alleviate some of that anxiety and therefore um, the feelings of feeling rushed and and uh, making dumb mistakes because of that. Another thing that's also really important to understand is over the course of a given section, you're naturally going to slow down, right? So if you um, want to just maintain a steady pace, what you'll need to do is in your head, kind of artificially, you'll need to sort of hurry yourself up in order to maintain that steady pace. Another tip, and I, I mean, I'm sure you've heard this from other people as well, uh, but something that can really, that really helped me at least for timing issues is I would just force myself to do the easy questions faster, right? I just wouldn't allow myself to double or triple check those answers. If I knew an answer and I was pretty confident in it, I would just pick it. And again, I'm, I'm rushing myself through that, but in, instead I didn't really need that extra time in order to uh, really solidify that answer. And so that can kind of save you some time if you can do that consistently. Another thing that can really help simplify your process um, and therefore you know, allow you to answer questions quicker is you can physically strike through. So use the strike through button um, and strike through the worst two options. So that way when you're choosing between fit, like the last two options, so that final 50-50, uh, you're only looking at two options because the other ones have been struck out. And so I know it sounds silly, but if you only look at two options, in my head at least when I was going through it, it just made it visually easier. And so therefore it gave my, my brain a little bit more clarity. And so I was able to uh, process that question a little faster. And sort of the last thing that um, I would say in terms of having too little time is sometimes a lack of time really comes from, you know, periods where you lose focus or not, not necessarily that you zone out, but you just aren't maintaining focus over the, the whole time. At least myself personally, I, I found myself a lot of times, especially in cars, where I would read a whole paragraph and be like, oh, I, I actually didn't get anything from that because I wasn't really paying attention. So if I ever experienced that, whether in cars or in a science section, what I would do is I would just allow myself to just stare at the wall behind the screen. And I would just stare at it for like three seconds, allow myself to reset, and then I would jump back in, right? And that, that little three second reset, at, at least for me, did wonders. Now, if you're someone who is very lucky and you have too much time, uh, first of all, congratulations. Um, if you're finishing with, you know, uh, maybe five minutes, maybe 20 minutes of extra time. So my advice to all of you who finish with extra time, and, and generally this, this usually happens for the psychology and sociology section, I would kind of think about your, your strategy, how to effectively use that extra time, and kind of think about it in sort, sort of like two, two buckets, right? So one being... I have about five minutes of extra time, so five to 10 minutes, and then like 15 plus, right? So if you have five minutes of extra time, I think it's, you know, the, the standard advice is just to go back and review the questions that you flagged, and I think that can then serve you well. But at least for me, I, I personally found that when I went back and reviewed my flagged questions, I would basically try, like change as many wrong answers to right answers as I would from right answers to wrong answers, right? So it was kind of a wash and reviewing flagged questions wasn't super helpful for me. So instead, what um, I tried doing, and this is what I would recommend if you have sort of 10 plus minutes for a given section, I would recommend starting from question one and basically going through chronologically. So one, two, three, four, whatever, and I'm just trying to get through as many as you can. You don't need to get through all of them for, for sure. Uh, but basically what I would do is instead of trying to redo those questions, I would purely just review them to look and make sure you didn't make a dumb mistake. And what I mean by that is make sure that you didn't misread the question or misread the answer choice. So all I would do in those situations is I would just read the question and just read the answer choice and just make sure that it just answers the question, right? I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to refer back to the, the paragraph or the passage or whatever. I'm not even going to you know, think about, oh, did I choose the right answer? I was kind of on the fence. I, I wouldn't change my answer at all. I would just make sure I was catching those dumb mistakes. Because sometimes when you're reading a question, you're like, oh, I, I missed that negative modifier. Like I missed a not or a least or whatever. So it's just trying to catch those mistakes. A good rule of thumb for that is I would not allow myself to change an answer unless I had like an aha moment. And so what I mean by that is uh, I wouldn't allow myself to change an answer unless I was like, oh, dang it, like I misread that or whatever. If you have one of those moments of realization where you, you screwed up, then you can change your answer. But if you don't have that, you're not allowed to change it, even if you're kind of on the fence. The bottom line is 
your original self when they were doing that problem had more time and they had more context and so they probably did a better job than um, the, the version of you that's reviewing it at the end of the test. So the last piece of advice that I have for timing issues is to use the tutorial time, the time before you actually start the MCAT to your advantage. For those of you who aren't aware, you're given about 10 to 15 minutes of time uh, where they walk you through you know, how to advance to the next question, how to use the highlighting tools, the, the strike through tools. Most of the, the software you should already be, be familiar with and so you don't necessarily need to read any of that tutorial material. But, I mean, they give you 10 to 15 minutes, right? So we can use that instead for our, our own purposes. So one way that you can maximize your time is a day or two before your exam date, uh, I want you to kind of create a, your own little cheat sheet, right? So I want you to create a sheet where it has sort of the, the highest yield, super memorization heavy concepts. So things like the amino acid R groups, the stages of development for psychology, uh, maybe some physics equations or redox um, reactions, uh, just stuff that you, you personally struggle with that you know will probably show up on the exam. Um, and so I want you to fill that page, like physically write out um, all those concepts. And then what I want you to do is in that day or two before, I want you to practice writing out as much of that material as you can in let's say 10 minutes, right? So see if you can copy down 20 physics equations, all the amino acid R groups, and then all the stages of development um, in 10 minutes. And I want you to do that multiple times. So maybe like six times. And then I also want you to copy that down uh, right before you go into, um, right before you drive to the testing center. So once you get to the testing center, I again want you to review that whole sheet um, and spend that time, as much time as you need to kind of reviewing other concepts, doing some last minute Googling, um, but basically review right until you check in. So the check-in process to, to take the MCAT takes about two to three minutes. And so the beauty of that is you were just reviewing material two to three minutes before you sit down in your exam seat. And so in that time, you won't really forget much. And again, we're gonna take all this really difficult memorization heavy material and put it in our short-term memory. Now, ideally you also wanna have this in your long-term memory, but if you can keep it in your short-term memory, when you walk in, you're gonna sit in your chair, right? And the first thing that I want you to do is take your pen and the scratch paper that they give you and start writing it down, just like you practice those you know, six or 10 times before. So write down that cheat sheet and then uh, you're good to go, right? So you'll ideally have about five minutes where you can, again, kind of calm yourself before starting, um, before the test even starts. So we can really use that tutorial time to your advantage. And the reason why I bring all of this up is that way, as you get to questions throughout the MCAT, that can actually save you some time, right? If you don't need, you don't need to take that extra 20 seconds to think about, ah, oh, dang, what was the amino acid structure for histidine? Like, what did that look like? You know, you can just look and you already have it right there because you already drew it out. So hopefully that'll save you 30 seconds a few times on the, on the MCAT and it'll be worth it. Just as a caveat, this doesn't apply to COVID testing conditions. Uh, COVID has definitely ruined a lot of things and this is one of them. So can't use this little cheater thing, um, but hopefully you can pass it on to your friends. If you like this video, uh, I hope you share it with your other pre-med friends and um, feel free to subscribe as well too, because we're trying to put out a weekly video from here on out. I'm one of the tutors here for MCAT self prep. I personally scored a 528 on the MCAT exam, but the main thing is I'm just super passionate about helping you all succeed up for the MCAT. And so let me know what kind of concepts or uh, different videos you want me to make and I'll try and respond to this. So thanks.